guys, it's Tazzle here. Well, I'm a Tazzle Tube Guest. Now I'm here talking to my buddy. Hey man, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, I'm doing pretty good. So I was just going to ask you, I was just going to ask you so my audience knows out there, where are you coming from? I am calling from Utah. Awesome! Uh, yes, you know, you know, you understand how hot it gets. <laughs> I do. Today I was do. just... We had, we, we've had a very hot summer. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I don't know, like, if it's any, I know I'm just, I'm up in here, up in here, Canada. Yes, guys. But I'll say this. I know it's like, I know, I know nothing compared to the heat that you guys get down there, but I'm like, oh, during the summer, I'm just like, oh, I don't like that, those days where I'm just dripping in sweat. But yes, um, so, wow, like, I was just looking, like, uh, looking in the background. So you think you got talent? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me a little bit of what, what you do. Okay, so I am a podcaster. I've been podcasting since 2013. Yeah. I do an interview show called Beyond the Playlist with Jay Hammond C, where I interview people who make a living doing creative things. Uh, then I do soundography with uh, podcast Hall of Famer Brian Ibbett. And wow. we do a crash course in music, one band at a time. And then right now we are working a Kickstarter for the – so you think you've got the talent to be America's next top podcaster – which is basically a how-to podcast show wrapped up in the tropes and the humor and the, the jokes of a reality program. So that's kind of what we're doing. we got the Kickstarter running now. we got five days left on it. Um, we got some cool stuff. But, yeah, it's a, it's basically it's a how-to podcast, but we're, we're making it more entertaining than just a, you know, a web series and a couple of points. Oh, yeah. Points. Yeah. Hey, uh, you hold. I know I can't. I can't apply. I know I'm only Canadian. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, uh, w what made you want to get into doing podcasting in the first place? You can go into detail about that. Well, so what what happened was I've spent the last 20, 25 years working in and around jails and prisons and and, and correct the court systems yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I really just needed to have a creative outlet. And so, after in college, I played in bands. I worked in theater. I did all kinds of stuff like that, but it wasn't until um, I got I, my first show I ever appeared on was called Forgotten Flicks, and we talked about a movie called Trick or Treat that had supposedly had Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne in it, but they were only in it for like five hot seconds. Yeah, I think it's, I, horrible, it's not a, it's not a good movie. No, I think I've heard of it, but yeah, I think I may have heard of it. But there's another one with uh, uh, I, I, it was like a cameo. Like, it was like Vampire Suck, and it had like Alice Cooper in it. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah, so I did that. The, what the friend of mine said, hey, if you, you made us watch this film, you're going to come on the show and talk about it with us because you kind of suck for putting us on, making us watch this piece of garbage. <laughs> so I went on <laughs> And I got bitten by the bug, just the idea of just talking to people about the things I enjoy and finding people who were kind of in the same kind of mindset. It was just too much to ignore. And so in the following December, so just a couple months later, I started doing my interview show and I'm, I'm 300, over 350 interviews in. I've never missed a week. I've interviewed Oscar winners, Emmy nice. winners. Award-winning musicians. Uh, That's cool. Special special effects guys who've worked on like Men in Black and just some really amazing. The the keyboard player for Dream Theater was on not too long ago. So I mean, wow. I've, I've interviewed some amazing people, and it's just been a slow grow with that show. But then Soundography came along, and uh, we just did a show not long ago on the Dead Milkmen. Nice. You know the Bitchin' Camaro guys. Yeah, yeah, Bitchin', yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. And the lead singer. Rodney Anonymous actually followed us on Twitter, got a hold of us, and we did a follow-up interview with him that actually just came out today, where he was talking about some of the things we got wrong, some of the things we missed, some of the things that where we made assumptions and we were right or wrong. It was just, so it's it's turned out really well. Well, just so you guys know, you know, I got exclusive there. That's right. But I'll say, uh, yeah. So um, so uh. Getting into your podcasting and all everything else, what would you say would be the most hardest part of of doing what you do? What's the hardest thing? Um, to be really honest with you, it's I don't think any of it's that hard. It's just a matter of being willing to put the work in, and it's that, that entrepreneurial spirit where you might not be making any money, but you are making an impact or. You're talking like beyond the playlist basically was started as a cheap excuse for me to track down and talk to people whose work I admire and I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so 
I'm fans of everyone who I have on. And then, you know, so the hard part, I guess, would be tracking them down and booking and scheduling and making sure. Oh, I know what I, I know what I feel like. Oh, God. So I think that's the hardest part is just making sure that you're available when they're available so yeah. that you can do the, have the best show possible. It's it, it's hard. I just had to ask because I know, like with me or whatnot, like, like for example, I'm just saying I, I schedule or book, try to book 29 people a day. But at the same sense, you know that it doesn't always work out because there's always people, mm-hmm. things come up. And then you got to look at the list and say, okay, I'm going to bump this person up on the list or, you know. Yep. Well, and for me, I, I, I record anywhere from four to seven weeks in advance just in case. People wow. Okay, you beat and me. So, you beat me there. I swear to God, I'm still working on my week. But then I post I post every other day. So I post yeah. three every other day. So so I, I usually post – well, I, I post at least once a week. It's most Some months I post every – or every or like twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, I have a Wednesday show the coming out this week for the former guitar player for Mushroom Head, Tommy Church. Nice. Um, he's talking about new projects he's working on. We talk about new music, that kind of thing. So, I mean, for me, it's just a matter of fitting in a weekly schedule at minimum. And then if I have a bonus episode where I talk to a, you know, a composer that's really cool or someone's got a project they're really trying to push on a timetable, then I can throw out a Wednesday episode. Yeah. All right, so I was just going to ask you, uh, do you have any, uh, I know out of your experience, do you have any words of uh, advice for my audience? Uh, the, the best thing I could probably give you as far as advice is whatever it is you do, lean into it. Because if you try to be someone you're not, you're not going to have the passion, you're not going to be genuine, and the audiences are going to know it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was just going to say, uh, but uh, what was your, what what has to be within within your experience, what would be the most rewarding thing of what you do right now? I, I think it's the people I've met. Um, over the course of the last five years, I've, I've met and maintained friendships with quite a few really awesome people. Nice. Not just podcasters that I'm working with now or work around or hang out with. Yeah. But, you know, they're actors, actresses, musicians that I've developed relationships with that when they come to town, we go to dinner. And when I'm in their neck of the woods, we track each other down. And so... Those kind of relationships I would not have had without podcasting. Yeah, but I, I like it. I like it too because the whole the, even when my tubecaster would not like even when this I'll say it's like podcasting in a way, but I'll say uh, I like that. Um, I like the, the experience that it gives you because you're also sure you got you got a job, you got other priorities that are going, but you have to make up yourself a schedule, and it's kind of also giving you business experience too because you got to look at everything from a professional standpoint mm-hmm. and then on that's something that, then that's something that i don't I, i'm significantly older than you are yeah you are <laughs> and, and and so for me to have 25 almost 30 years working in professional yeah. environments uh that kind of maintaining a schedule maintaining this as a business has not been a hard transition I've no 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 of course ethic not over so that part that part moved in actually really well. I also spent, you know, five years stage managing and running build crews on in theater and live theater. Nice. So the idea of, of being creative and businessy is something I, I've gotten really good at. Yeah. You also you get a lot of, like you get a lot of skills. A lot of skills because I know it's like like either either make the ones better that you already have or you you gain other and you never stop learning. No, it's true. I mean, just today, as a matter of fact, I was tinkering around with lock, uh, the recording program and figured out four or five more things that I could do to make myself sound better on my shows. That's cool. Actually, it was and they're, and they're, no, sorry. they're subtle, but they're they're subtle, but they're, they're things like how to adjust a couple of EQ tweaks and how to use a, a freaking limiter and noise gate. To yes. Make, you know, people's breath disappear and stuff like that. Just simple little things, but every every little bit like on its own won't make a difference but combined things start to notice and people start going oh wow that actually sounds really good yeah and you uh, I, I, guys just to let you guys know at home like even with the limiter i swear to god like i i forget who it was but it was someone of my audience that they actually contacted me and like bro 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 you're clipping and i'm like 
Oh, good, sir. How am I clipping? And then he goes, well, you know what? He explained how the audio input, how it goes up and down on Discord and all this lovely. On, uh, not on Discord, but on OBS. And I'm like, oh. So he's like, you got to add, like, you have to add a, uh, a, a preamp limiter between your mm-hmm. microphone and your mixer. I'm like, okay. So I tried that, and hey, it, it worked. Yep. Those those little things, they, they matter. And uh, I know you do a lot of video stuff, and those are those are skill sets that I haven't jumped into yet, but coming up soon, hey, I've got a couple of ideas where video and streaming and all that kind of stuff, it's going to come in, and I'm going to have to learn how to do that too. Yeah. it's it. Yeah, you know, I could say this a lot because I don't know everything, but I'll say this. Uh, yeah, I gotta keep on learning. I just, I'll say this. I'm really glad that I just learned how to use a soundboard. Oh my gosh! <laughs> See, and from when I and when I played uh, in live bands when I was in college, the the idea of working with sound was something I was actually really natural with. So right nice. out of the gate, my show sounded pretty good, and it's just gotten incrementally better over the years. Yeah. That's what that's what I meant. Going back to yes, that's whatever skills that you do have. That's why it enhances it over time because how man how much you use them. Because I find a lot of people when they're getting to streaming and they're getting to, in, into this, they're like, oh yeah, I need all the bells and whistles, but you really don't. Yeah. But then you slowly make a list and then you upgrade and upgrade and upgrade and try to you know tweak it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And always do yeah, your I mean, always do your reviews on equipment too because yeah, there's a lot I mean, of. I, Oh, I got to tell you, I mean, when I, uh, you know, back in the early 2000s, I built a computer and my, my, my budget was really small. So the only thing I spent a lot of money on was CPU and RAM. Everything else I kept under 50 bucks. And then as I got more money, I would upgrade each, upgrade each component until I had a really smoking machine. Yeah. And it was, it was gorgeous. But at the same time, I started out small and just kind of as I learned more and as I was able to upgrade i was able to make those tweaks and those adjustments until i had a pretty smoking machine that's that's the problem with some that's what the problem with a lot of people out there like they think oh yes i'm just gonna it's gonna magically happen by if i just go buy this equipment it's gonna make me better but no like there's a learning aspect to it too because make sure that when it comes down to like equipment that that you're you're that you buy or whatever you you use make sure you know the the good reviews on it but also make sure that you'll know how to properly use it yeah that's a key especially like i mean i've dealt with a lot of musicians yeah and you know every guitar player thinks they're going to be whatever problems they're suffering will be cured by a brand new pedal or (laughs) some effects processor and it's not they just need to spend more time practicing it's just it's just like when i went to a i went to a uh a recent concert bon jovi or whatnot but i'll say this i i the, the opening band came. They're they're all right, but then the the mic the mic or the sound system that they had put together it was so configured that we me and my girlfriend we were sitting under the speakers and we're like oh god this sounds like it's gonna hurt our ears or whatnot because they're jamming like you know really loud and then you know what Bon Jovi comes on it sounds perfect man we're like there's no problem here but this but Bon Jovi he had a lot of freaking you know he's had a lot of practice with this stuff and he knows what the hell he's doing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's funny, though. It's not just old bands that can uh, be good. I mean, I saw Kiss. So back in the, what was it, early 2000s, I saw Kiss and Aerosmith on tour. And the okay, the I was just gonna, I was just gonna say that was that still? I'm not sure on my, I'm not sure on my Kiss history, but please, is that the uh, Tommy Thayer Kiss or is that the Ace Frehley Kiss? Uh, it was. I think Ace was with them on this tour. Okay. To be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, so it it was one of those shows where Kiss came out first and they sounded amazing. And and let's throw it out there. The the uh, venue here in town where they play where they play these huge concerts is where the jazz play, the Utah Jazz. And the place is a freaking cave. It doesn't sound good. It's a horrible sounding venue. But Kiss came out and they sounded awesome. They they tuned the building right, they got it right. Aerosmith comes out and it sounded like someone just turned on a garbage disposal. And I really was disappointed because uh, I was actually more excited to see Aerosmith than yeah. I was Kiss. But I, at the end of the night, Kiss put on a much better show, and I understood everything that was said. Every note was clear, and Aerosmith just was—it was just garbage. And I, it kind of changed my opinion of Aerosmith. Yeah, 
I can't understand that. Like one of the one of the concerts I've been to I, that was really memorable to me is like I know how young I am. But I'll say this. I'll say that me. I went to go see Alice Cooper. Like he he like what op- who opened for Alice Cooper was Queen Scythe. And then it went Alice Cooper. Then it went down to Ronnie James Dio, Black Sabbath. Oh wow! So this was before Dio died. Yeah, this was before Dio died. This was actually like a couple of months before. It was heaven. Oh, wow. so you, it was the Heaven so, and Hell tour. Yeah, so it was Queensrÿche. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know that. I know that tour. I almost went. To, I almost went to see them when they were here in town with me. Nice, nice. Yeah, we, I went to go see it. But you know what, Cooper? I like. I, I like show bands, but I like how Cooper puts on a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also like I thought it was like it was all right when Dio came on, but I'm say this it would be more nostalgic when I when I would see it with Ozzy, but still, but uh, Dio was all right too, and is I like Heaven I, and I, Hell. Heaven and Hell was I it? I liked um, I liked Dio as a solo artist. I and I and he did okay with Sabbath, but I like Sabbath with Ozzy better. Yeah. I'll have to say that. Me, what made Sabbath for me, I'll say this. It wasn't so much Ozzy, but Tony Omi, if he's in that band, um, fucking right. It's going to kick ass. Yep. Oh, he is the yeah. Iron Man. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dude, well, I would like, give that guy props. You know what? I'm, I'm playing with free, I'm playing with those uh, prosthetic, uh, like, those prosthetics. Oh, my gosh. I swear to God, yeah. if I could play with those, I'm like, Dude. You owe me a steak by the time I'm done this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, but no, thank you, thank you, man, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, no, hey, yeah, no, this is great. If uh, if if I can recommend something, um, okay. There's a series called. Um, it's by Sam Dunn. He's a Canadian director. Yeah. And he did a documentary a while back called uh, "Headbangers Journey." Oh yes, I have that. I had that one, and I also have. Uh, 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 was it like it was like I, I don't I have global metal and I also have metal the headburner's journey. Yeah, yeah. global metal's good, but it also he did a series for VH1 called Metal Evolution. Oh, and it's awesome. I'll have to look. I'll have to. I'll have to when when they have like you know I guess that they have it like somewhere on like they have it like a season type thing where I'll buy a box set of it and look for it everywhere. But oh my no, gosh. Yeah, I bought mine off Amazon, and it's it's awesome. It's I saw it when it was broadcast on VH1, and then my kid bought it for me for Christmas a couple of years ago, and I nice. probably watched it three or four times. It's it's an amazing series. I loved I loved I loved his one with the Headbangers Journey with metal, and now he talked to Rob Zombie, and then he talked to like oh Slayer and everything else like that. I'm like, and then apparently Alice Cooper is now properly known. I didn't know this. He's properly known as. Sh- um, like back when that this time Mel came out, he was shock rock or yep yeah, and then all yeah, that, and it, yeah. And it's it's totally funny because his his whole I mean he he was interviewed somewhere and he's like huh I wonder when Marilyn Manson got the idea of a dude with a, a woman's name <laughs> yeah so he uh, he kind of takes credit for some of that idea I bet yeah I'm well you know like in the you know how like uh. Ozzy, he always does the the devil thing, like the uh, the mm-hmm. salute, the the rock metal salute. We all know. Yeah, the but whole, then, like yeah. Dio, like in that in the metal headbangers journey, said like he got that from his grandmother or something like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess a lot of people are taking credit. But I've seen well, that. Like, you know, even Gene Simmons takes credit for it somewhere. Yeah, but Gene's making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's a real, real, really smart businessman. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, yeah, no, the the Headbangers Journey is great, but that Metal Evolution is awesome because it's broken down into the genres of metal, not just the history. Oh, okay. So you do a whole section on power metal, you do a whole section on progressive metal where they talk about Dream Theater, they talk about new metal, and they spend a lot of time on Disturbed. Um, they talk about, you know, theatrical metal and, you know, just all kinds of stuff like that. And it's it's right. really cool. Yeah, it's I heard awesome. some of the stuff in Nor- uh, Norway or the stuff like, you know, uh, out towards Europe. That stuff is heavy, man. I want to yeah. go to Wacken. I want to go Wacken, the that uh, that that festival, Wacken. Yeah, I'd, Wacken, I'd Germany. I want to do that or Donington. I don't know which one I want to do. I do want to do one of them. Yeah, but yes, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for reaching out to me. This is great. Well, like I say, guys, like I always say, guys,
right, guys, you know what? That's my buddy Hammond hey, News. Check out the description below, and you'll have to see his lovely likes and the Stop By His Awesome Podcast. See some extra sweet ass stuff, too. Well, anyways, guys, so please leave me a like because I like bacon, you like bacon, we all like bacon. Now, Peter, step the hell off because you know what? I, you know, I'll, I'll say this. I'm Canadian. It makes sense. I'm not, but my girlfriend knows this. I'm not, it's not pretty if I don't get my bacon, so trust me. Please, guys, leave me a like. But you know what, guys? Don't believe what. Don't even talk to my girlfriend. Because I swear to God, she's going to say I'm not pretty in the morning in general. So, guys, please hit the notification bell so you stay up to date to all of my new videos. And I'll see you guys next time, guys. See you guys!